I was recently introduced to a leather handbag brand that, to me, is an affordable alternative to Hermes bags. And it's from a brand you've probably never heard of, but you're going to want to know about them, and I have six of their handbags to show you today, so stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget, from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage, where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. And in fact, my community posts is where I first told you guys about these bags because I wanted to let you know about them right away. You'll find out why in a minute because, well, the reason is because the stock is very limited and I couldn't do a video yet because I was waiting on the bags to arrive. They are here now. And this video is in collaboration with a few other people, Winnie B. L. V., Dawn Loves Couture, and Fuchsia Floyd who have also purchased handbags from this collection. Either different bags from mine or different colors from mine. They will be showing those in their videos. So I will have all of those linked below. I will also have, of course, the link to the bags and the links to a couple of other videos that I'll mention here in just a minute. But before I get to that, let me give you an overview of what I'm gonna talk about in this video. First, I'll show you all six bags, but just give you a really quick look at them, just so you know what we're talking about here. Then I'll tell you how I found out about them and what I've learned about them. And perhaps most importantly, I'll tell you what you need to know before you go out and buy one. I'll give you a hint, the website cannot be trusted, so I have some information for you on that. And then I'll give you a more detailed look at the bags and do some mod shots so you can get an idea of the sizing. The name of the handbag company is Henry's Leather Goods, and if you try googling them, you will not find much. There's not a lot of information about them at all. Let me show you what I have here. The first piece, this is what drew me to the collection. This is called their foldover bag, and here's just a very quick spin. Again, I'll give you a closer look later in the video. This one, by the way, is in taupe. The next bag is their messenger bag. This one is in the mini size in the color white. I also have the medium size, they call this the crossbody bag. This is in the color gray. And I have the same bag, the crossbody, in red, and this is in the size small. And I have the bucket bag in size large, and the bucket bag in size small. This color is desert, this is navy. With these, it's pretty clear to see the Hermes influence, or at least the Hermes vibes, because I can't say for sure that these were influenced by Hermes. But these, of course, look a lot like the Hermes Evelyn bag. The foldover gives me some Lindy vibes, even though it doesn't have those handles on the side. I think because of the boxy shape, some of the hardware, I get Lindy. And then the rest of them, the messenger and the two buckets, and the other three I just showed you, I get Hermes vibes from those because they're all leather. They have that sleek minimal design. The silver hardware, which at some angles looks a bit like an H. When I first saw these, I was sold immediately, had to get some, and I immediately thought, that looks like Hermes. Now, how did I find out about this company? Because like I said, if you Google it, you won't find much of anything. The reason you won't find much of anything is they are no longer in business. So the bags that are still available for purchase are the only bags left. They're not in production anymore. That's one of the reasons I bought six of them and told you about them right away so you could go snatch them up. And it's why I'm making this video so that you guys will have a chance to get them while they are still available. I found out about them through Alana, who has a YouTube channel called Coach Craze. And I actually didn't see it on her YouTube channel first. I saw it in one of the Coach Facebook groups that we're both in. She posted a photo of the four bags and two wallets that she had purchased from the collection. And again, they were just beautiful. And she wrote this whole paragraph where she was raving about them. And then she made a video and then she made another video because a lot of people were interested. And she was learning just like I have been getting new information and she wanted to provide that information for you guys. So I will certainly have her channel linked below so you can watch her videos as well. I think she has some of the same bags that I have, but in different colors. And as I was researching the company, both before I purchased the bags, but also 
before doing this video. I like to be prepared and have as much information as I can for you guys. I came across a video that Suze What did. I'm going to have that linked below too. This was a few years ago when Henry's was still in business and her video includes some screenshots of their website, which is no longer live. So I was able to pull a few screenshots and get a little information from there as well. And then the only other video I've seen on YouTube about any Henry's bag is from Pramila Mendez and she reviews one of the totes. Hers is in the teal color, very pretty. I don't think any of us that I've mentioned so far has purchased a tote. So if you're curious about that, that would be the video to watch. I will have that linked below as well. So many of you over the years have recommended to me and asked when I'm going to buy Dooney and Burke. I don't have any Dooney in my collection. I certainly know about them. I sometimes look at them when I go to a department store that has one or to TJ Maxx because they have them sometimes. And some of them I do find really beautiful. I have been drawn to some of the Dooney designs before, but I've never been drawn enough to them to purchase them. Why am I talking about Dooney all of a sudden? Well, it's because the designer of Henry's is Henry Peter Dooney. Henry's Leather Goods was his company, and these are all designed by him in Connecticut, where he's from. On the Dooney and Burke website, they have a section where they feature a few other companies outside of Dooney that they promote, and Henry's Leather Goods is one of those. And on that page, they say that the Henry's bags were small batch bags, so they weren't mass produced. I was going through my screenshots before doing this video, and for some reason I did not screenshot where where I got this information, but it's either from the Henry's website that I saw on Suze Wet's video, or it's from the Dooney's website. And it says that Henry's bags are handcrafted in the heart of Connecticut and in Florence, Italy. If you don't know this, Florence is known for their leather markets. It goes on to say they're made from French leathers, Italian twill straps, and jewelry grade Italian palladium hardware. That sounds impressive. That tugs at the heartstrings of all of us handbag lovers. It has the keywords France, Italy, and jewelry grade palladium. And from what we have all gathered discussing this amongst ourselves, they appear to have been handmade by one artisan. The reason we know this is inside some of the bags, you get this card. It says all Henry's bags are crafted from the highest quality French calf leathers and superior Italian hardware. This bag was made in Italy by, and then it gives you the name of the artisan who made it. It has undergone thorough, it says through, but it should be thorough inspection and approval by, and then it gives the name of the inspector. Handcrafted by one artisan, huh? How very Hermes of you. So if you like the look of these bags, and certainly you love what you just heard about them, you're probably already over on the website from my link below checking them out, right? But wait, there's more. There are some things you need to know before you buy. When you look at the website, there are a limited number of photos for the bags, and I've come across a few that don't have photos at all for a particular color, but many of them have, at least for the bags, about four pictures, and then if you scroll down, some of them have a picture of the inside of the bag. And that's where things get tricky, because the insides of most of the bags that are pictured show the interior being a raw leather, so the other side of the outside of the leather, the suede. For example, I'll bring this closer. On this large bucket bag, if I open this up here, we peek inside, we see the inside is just the other side of the outside, right? It's that nice, beautiful suede. However, that bag is the only one of the six that I got that has that interior that matches the website. Every other bag has this interior. Well, with the exception of one, I'll show you in a minute, but all the other bags have this. It's this here. This is a smooth, light yellow leather. Now the bottom of this bag is the same leather as the outside, but everything else here, let me give you a spin of it, is that smooth leather in the light yellow, except the pocket as well. Now in the first video that Alana or Coach Craze did showing these bags, she talked about the inside of the leather and said she didn't really like it. There's one more I need to show you that she liked better. And of all six of my bags, the Messenger is the only one that has this different interior. That was the same with hers. Her Messenger had this interior. And that is this more brown leather. And that's all over the inside of the bag. So side by side, just to give you a color comparison, 
that's how they look. Now feeling them, the darker leather in the Messenger does feel slightly softer than this one, but they're both very smooth. So I wanted to point that out. And in the video I told you where there's a tote, that also has the light yellow interior. So far of all the people that I know that have purchased these bags, the only ones that have had the suede interior are my large bucket. And then there's a small drawstring pouch that doesn't have a strap that also had the suede interior. Now I can't guarantee that you would get that interior with every color of that particular particular style bag, but I would guess that you're more likely to get it if you order that particular style of bag and that particular size because my large bucket has the raw suede, but my small one has the yellow leather. The yellow leather, by the way, feels like it might be wipeable. I haven't tried that though. Another difference we've seen from the website, on the backs of the bags, the website shows that Henry's and then the maiden stamp is stamped into the back of the bag just like it is on this one. However, most of the bags that have the imprinting also have this white colored lettering on them. So be aware of that. And I just ran my finger over it because it doesn't look when you're looking at it like it's imprinted or like it's stamped, but it feels like it is. It's kind of hard to tell, but I can definitely feel it on the H. Another difference I found from the website is that the straps which are the same on all the bags and the same colors on all the bags, except for the leather bits at the end, which match the bag. The straps themselves appear to be a dark brown on the website, at least on my computer, but in person, they're actually more of a taupe. So here it is against the taupe bag, so you can see that. If you're interested in one of these crossbody bags, the ones that look like the Evelyn, the photos on the website are going to show the connection here being different. They'll show a connection that has a leather piece and no metal at all. It's pretty, I like it, and I was expecting that. However, on both of the crossbodies that I ordered, I got this metal connection instead, which I might prefer. There's a little more palladium never hurt anybody. Although, speaking of palladium, I can't tell you for sure that these are actually palladium. Why do I say that? Because as you heard, it says they're palladium, but on one of the totes, when you go to the listing and you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a photograph of someone with the tote over their shoulder and it has these numbers on it where you can click on them and find out more information about the bag and some of its features. And one of them points to the hardware and it says it's nickel. And these bags don't come with any information about what the materials are, nor do the listings say what they are. So your guess is as good as mine, whether you're getting palladium or nickel, no idea. And that's a little frustrating, but either way, they're very beautiful. One more thing you need to know that isn't the best news, and then I'll give you some information that will help you pick the better bags, fingers crossed. The leather is very inconsistent across the different bags. All the leather is beautiful to look at, but it's not all so nice to touch. My large bucket bag is what you think of when you think of beautiful, soft, gorgeous, smushy leather. This is the one that has the raw interior and it is fabulous. This is everything I dreamed this line of bags would be. The rest of the leathers, because they have that leather interior as well as the leather on the outside, they're a little more stiff. They're not so smushy. They're still malleable, but they're not smushy and just, here, look at this. I put it on my hand. Well, it's not doing it now. There you go, it just falls over. That's how smushy that leather is. The rest of these bags won't do that. You'll have the best chance at it with the other bucket bags and maybe with the tulip tote, which I haven't seen anybody show, but it looks like it might be a smushier bag. But with the crossbodies or the foldovers or messengers, those bags are a lot more structured. They're going to hold their shape very well. But the feel of the leather on all the bags, except the one with the suede interior, they all feel like they have some kind of coating on them. Most of them, I think except the smushy bucket one, were wrapped in plastic or a styrofoamy plastic as they would be coming straight from the manufacturer. Some of them I could tell were returns because there was a sticker on them that had been pulled off and I could tell it had been removed before. I wasn't the first one to open it. That doesn't bother me. Just saying when you order from this collection, you may be getting a return doesn't mean there will be anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with any of my bags. But be prepared for the leather to feel a little weird. Alana of Coach Craze was telling me that some people who ordered bags after seeing her video said to her that they felt dusty. They don't feel dusty to me. I can see why somebody might describe it that way, but that's not how it feels. 
the worst one for me, unfortunately, is on my favorite design, the bag that brought me into the collection, which is the fold-over. This leather just doesn't feel pleasant to me. I don't like the texture of it. I don't like just the way it feels. It doesn't feel like leather to me. It is leather, but it, I don't know how to describe it. I don't, I can't, I haven't been able to think of anything to give you an idea of what it feels like. But I can tell you this, as much as I love this bag and the color, because I really wanted something in taupe and this was the only one I could get my hands on, I love the design of this. The feel of the leather is the reason I'm sending it back. The rest of them feel better than that one, but none of them feel as good as this. And Alana from Coach Craze was also saying that she was comparing the leathers to Hermes. Now, if I remember correctly, she doesn't have Hermes bags, but she said she had felt them before, maybe? This one maybe does. One of my friends ordered some of these bags, and she also has Hermes bags, and she said that these do not feel like Hermes. But she doesn't have one of these with the raw interior either. Now, based on my bags and talking to other people who also have some of these, we discovered something very interesting. As you know, these bags are made either in Florence, Italy, or in Connecticut in the United States. And all of us bag snobs out there would think, well, of course the Italy ones are gonna be better quality. That is not what we have found in this case. For the people I've talked to who've had bags made in both places, the made in USA bags are the ones they prefer. My large bucket bag was made in the USA. My messenger bag with that darker brown, softer interior, made in the USA. The rest were made in Italy. And something I have found is the made in USA bags are the ones that have the imprinting without color. And the made in Italy bags are the ones that have the white printing. Also the made in Italy bags are the ones that have the card that say they were made by that one person with a wonderful Italian name. The made in USA bags don't have that. So that's a plus for the Italy bags. The made in Italy bags also come with a dust bag, whereas neither of my made in USA bags did. And these are nice dust bags. Here's like a cotton or muslin they have a drawstring, and they have this leather patch that says Henry's. So the Italy bags come with some nice accessories, some nice extra touches, but the USA bags seem to have nicer materials, at least in the leather. So if you can get your hands on a USA bag, that's what I would do. Now does it say in the listings where they're made? No, of course it doesn't. But you may have a better chance of getting that if you get a messenger or a large bucket bag. And then watch everybody else's videos and see what USA bags they may have. I think the little drawstring pouches you USA too, and you can try ordering those. See what happens. They do seem to have a generous return policy, so if you're not happy, you can send it back. Now I think that's finally all the information I have to share about the bags, so now I will move on to showing you the bags in more detail. So if you're still thinking about getting one, you can have a better idea of what you'll end up with. And the first thing I want to do is show you how this clasp works. Because these clasps, and you see how it looks like an H right there? These clasps are unique to Henry's and they're patented. So it has this piece of leather here. You just pull it down and slip it over that little hook and then you slide it out to the side. You don't have to slide it down through the top. It is open on this side right here. And of course closed on that one because gravity doesn't work with things just floating in midair. So to close it again, you would slide it back in pull it down and it catches on that hook there. Most of the bags just have one opening to put that hook through, but a few of them like the bucket bag have three and the crossbody bags also have three. So you can adjust as needed. All right, let's take a look at each bag. First, the small fold over. So this is very much just a boxy rectangle bag. It does have a nice pocket on the back, which is not gonna be big enough for your phone, no matter which phone you have, I think. And there's a better look at the side. So it's maybe a little tapered in at the top. There you go. We do have feet, hello. And this is made from one piece of leather besides the pockets and the little strap here. Uh, that's one of the things I really like about the design. You can see that it's just folded over and sewn. And when you open it up here, and this is not sewn to the flap, you open it up and then you open this up. That reminds me a lot of the Louis Vuitton, I think it's the Concerto bag. And then it has these little flaps on the side, which are a bit stiff. Alana mentions that in her video too, so be aware of that when you are putting things in and out of your bag. And then the inside is just a big open space and you can see if I can get the lighting right. Hold on. Yeah, you can see the folds down there and how it's tacked in and sewn in. On this bag, you do have that one slip pocket. And then every bag on the back of that piece of hardware, on the inside of the bag, you'll see this plaque. And I'll have to use a different bag to show that to you better. Also in every bag, you're gonna get this hang tag. It's attached with leather, 
but the tag itself is metal and they're orange on every one of them. Another thing that reminds me of Hermes, especially with the H on it for Henry's, it says Henry's Leather Co. And then on the back it's silver. You can remove that if you don't like it. I think it's really nice. None of the straps are detachable, so be aware of that. If you need it detachable, you would have to cut it off and add different straps. Here's how it's connected on this side. And as far as I've seen, all these straps are exactly the same. The same width, the same length. They're adjustable. It's very easy to adjust them. And they have a little leather piece here to help keep the two pieces from flopping around all over the place. And some of the bags, it will tend to be the made in Italy ones, will come with this little paper tag. It says Henry's. Inside it tells you what the bag is and what the price is. So this is the small fold over crossbody in taupe and it was $300. And then on the back, it says American Heritage Redefined, designed by Peter Dooney, handcrafted in Italy, Henry's handbags and accessories have impossibly sleek yet functional silhouettes made using premium leathers, self-trim design, and a unique patented closure. By the way, the edges of the leather are glazed and all of these have contrast stitching. It's not white, it's a light cream color. And that's the same on all the bags. The straps, the glazing, and the stitching are identical on all the bags that I have seen. Same colors, all of it. This is the mini messenger. You can really see the H on the buckle right there. We've got the tag, we have the same closure. Again, this strap is not attached to the flap. Open that up, you have a front pocket, still not big enough for a phone. You also have a back pocket, still not big enough for your phone. Although actually, let me try mine. I have an iPhone 10 and it does not fit, no. Coach Craze does a wet fits on some of her bags. I'm not doing that here. So if you wanna see that, you can go watch her video. So the back pocket, we have the sides, very similar to the fold over bag. We have the bottom with feet. We open this up. There's a flap here to open. Again, just like the fold over bag. I took the stuffing out so you can see it better. Yeah, this leather is so much nicer than the yellow the light yellow stuff, it's really pretty. It's soft and does feel maybe a little more pliable. I feel like this leather's gonna show wrinkles more. I don't know if that's coming across, but there's some wrinkles in there. I love this bag, but this is the other one that I'm sending back. The only reason is the color. I wanted to get one to see it, and I didn't like any of the colors that were available when I went to get this. I really would prefer it in taupe, but they didn't have it. I think Alana got the last one. So I'll keep my eye out, and if another one comes up, in a color that I really want, I would definitely order this again. This is the mini size, there's also a small. I might go up to the small. Yeah, this leather is so nice. That was the first time I'd taken the stuffing out of this and it feels really good. And now I'm second guessing whether I should return it. I still have time to think about it. I feel like even with this one that I keep picking up and thinking, should I return that? And then I keep saying, yeah, I should. These are such beautiful bags, despite some of the discrepancies and despite the feel of some of the leathers, I feel like if I send them back, I might regret it. So I'm still thinking. Oh, and I should do mod shots with these. So here is the fold over in the small size on my shoulder to give you a sense of the size of that. They do have a mini in this, which Alana has. So if you want to see that, and she has the small and the mini, so she can compare those for you. Here's the small fold over next to the mini messenger and the mini is bigger. None of the minis are really mini. They're all really good sized bags. There are those two next to each other. So you know what that looks like. With the bucket bags, they have four different sizes. There's a mini the small. There's one in the middle, which should be the medium, but they don't call it a medium. They just don't call it anything except a bucket bag. And then there's the large bucket bag. They're all each about an inch in difference, but I don't know where that inch is. I think it's across the bottom measurement. Oh, sorry. I'm a little uh, all over the place here, but here is the messenger bag on my shoulder to give you a sense of the size of that one and how that looks. Okay. The large bucket bag. I'm going to put that on my shoulder. And I'm going to put the small bucket bag crossbody so you can see the difference between those two. There's definitely a difference, but it's not as much as I thought it would be. So there's the small size again, and then here is the large size. The only one of these bags that I have carried so far is this one. And even with this strap closed, it's plenty big enough for me to stick my hand down and get my phone out of the pocket inside or anything else I need to get. So let's see this one up close. And by the way, the buckles may seem cumbersome, but I haven't found them to be that way at all. I found them really very easy to buckle and unbuckle when I need to do that. So there's the front, which that does hang straight. I'm just holding it crooked. 
So there's the front and the side and the back and the other side and the bottom. The buckets do not have feet. And you can see that the bottom is oval. And one of the things I was concerned about is how stiff that would be and would it just be sticking out from my body so far. And it's not, it's smushy. All right, let's open this up. You've already seen the inside of this bag, but it's hard to hold up because it just wants to fall in on itself. But it's just lined in the suede, as you can see. It has this one pocket back here, which is a perfect size to put your phone. And then now I can show you the Henry's tag. It says Henry's and then made in wherever. So this one USA. And it does have gold toned screws there. It's interesting. It's the only gold thing. So now we have the small bucket. This is in navy. By the way, when I pulled this out of the box and I saw the color of the navy, I was like, oh my god, yes. This might be the prettiest color of all of them, in my opinion. I think it's just gorgeous. It's a very rich navy. Beautiful. So the inside is that yellow. The base is the same blue leather as the outside. You have a pocket. And then one thing I neglected to mention earlier is the Made in Italy bags will have this little orange cloth tag. And I don't think I can get in there up close to show you, but on one side it says Henry's and on the other side it says Made in Italy. I have two more bags to show you. By the way, I'm so sorry I neglected to mention that I didn't actually purchase this one. A very dear friend purchased it for me as a belated Christmas gift. I was telling her about these bags because I knew she would like them and she bought a few and she was asking me which ones I was looking at, so I gave her a list. Next thing I know, she was emailing emailing me that one of the items on my list had been checked off. So let's look at this one first. So again, this is what they call the crossbody bag, and this is in the small size, which is bigger than I was expecting it to be. It has a giant pocket on the back, definitely big enough for your phone. This one has the tag, because this one is made in Italy. By the way, this is a beautiful red. They have a red and a persimmon, which is also a red, but it's more yellowy, or at least it has a little more yellow or, or a little bit of a more orange tone. Here's the bottom. It's really a beautiful, beautiful red. Now, those of you who know me well may remember that red is not my color. So why would I have put this on my list? Well, it's because of this photo, which was on the website. It's right at the top of all the Henry's bags. And I saw that and I thought, oh, that's really beautiful. I want to get one of the red ones, but I want to get it in a smaller size because I don't want a big pop of red. I want a small pop of red. And this is bigger than I thought it would be. It's like the perfect size. They also have a mini size. And then this is what they don't call a medium, but is a medium. And then they also have a large. The larger sizes of this are harder to find. You may need to wait for someone to return one. This color, which is gray, wasn't on the website anytime I looked. And then suddenly it was, and they didn't even have a picture of it. I snatched it based on just having familiarized myself with the names. And there was nothing else in gray. This is the only thing I've seen listed in gray at all. Oh, by the way, I wanted to compare the gray and the taupe. There may have been one other thing I saw listed in gray. The the taupe and the gray look very similar on the website. Yeah, there must have been because I saw the something in the gray and I was like, that's taupe. That's like a little bit darker taupe, but it's not. It actually is gray, but it's very, very similar to the taupe. So there you go. I could do a messenger in that gray. If anybody sees one, let me know. They're both beautiful colors. Anyway, back to the red bag. I keep thinking of more things to tell you. There's just so little information on these. I want you to know everything I know. All right, let's look inside here. So we have the yellow interior. So there is the inside. It has this one slip pocket. And that's it other than the pocket on the back. Here's this bag on the shoulder, but this is really more of a crossbody bag, isn't it? Let's do that. It is very easy to extend these. So there it is, crossbody, and there you go. Looks good with what I'm wearing. I will say one thing I've noticed when I wear these crossbody because of the way the straps are attached is it lays flat across here, but then it kind of twists out because of the way the ring hangs. So I've got the edge of the strap poking me a little bit. It's not that bothersome, but it's something I wasn't expecting. And for the medium crossbody bag, this one looks like this on me. It's very nice. Here's the front. I should do this up for you because it's so pretty when it's closed. So there's the front, the side, and the back, and the other side, and the bottom, and then the inside, which again is that yellow. And we do have a pocket inside this one as well, although it's very hard to see with all the shadows. That's it there. That's a great big pocket. Goes all the way to the bottom just about. 
that would definitely hold your phone. And of course you saw the pocket on the back of the bag, right? I have to say the leather on this one doesn't feel the best. It feels the most similar to that fold over that I'm returning. I have been looking for some kind of alternative to the Evelyn bag for so long. I do have the Coach, what is it called? Let me grab it. The Coach Emery. This is the 18 or 22, whatever size this was. It has a strap too. And this is great, but I wanted a bigger one. I had the bigger Emery, but it was too stiff. This one is more pliable. It's more like the Hermes ones. And I really like that about it. So this one's a keeper, even though I'm not crazy about the feel of the leather on it. I think that finally brings us to the end of the video. I've been racking my brain and I can't think of anything else to tell you about these. But if you do have questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best if I have the information to answer your questions. Also make sure you watch the other videos to get as much information as you can on these because stock is limited. Even though you can return things, you want to make good decisions, right? So Winnie BLV, Dawn Loves Couture, Fuchsia Floyd, they're all collaborating with me today. And then I also have videos linked for Coach Craze and Sue's What so you can see a little bit of the old website. And of course I have the bags linked below. Thank you so so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.